Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at a question which asks us to shift the supply and demand curve. With that said, let's get into it. So in front of us, we've got a question which says that the market price for ice cream cones in Sunnybrook is perfectly competitive. And initially the equilibrium price is $3 and that 600 cones are sold each day. We're then told that two events occur. One, the price of sugar, which is an input in the ice cream production, falls. The second event is that the temperature outside rises during a heat wave. And now we're tasked with graphing what happens to the supply and demand from the original equilibrium to the new equilibrium. And in order to do that, let's start with our original equilibrium. So we're gonna draw our two axes. We're gonna label the axes. Again, the vertical axis is price. The horizontal axis is quantity. And of course, I must label my entire graph so that I know which market I'm looking at. And in this case, it's the market for ice cream cones. Then I need to label my supply curve. So I'm just going to note it as S. Again, it is upward sloping to the right. And of course, with my supply curve must come my demand curve, which is downward sloping to the right. And I'm going to denote it as D for demand. And where these two curves cross over one another, supply equals demand. And I can denote that as my equilibrium, which you can see I label with an E. I have an equilibrium price and quantity, which I will denote as P star and Q star. However, the question actually tells me what they are. So I'm going to label them as $3 and 600 ice cream cone. And so this would be my original drawing for the original equilibrium with a fully labeled supply and demand graph. Let's take a look at what happens when the curves move. Let's look at the first event. So number one, the price of sugar, which the question tells us is an input into the ice cream production process falls. Now, if the price of an input in production falls, it must be cheaper to produce ice cream. And if it's cheaper to produce ice cream, then more ice cream will be supplied in the market because profits will be higher. And so this will actually shift the supply curve to the right, which you can see here. Now, my new supply curve is denoted as S prime, and that's just to let you know that it's the new one, not the original one. Let's take a look at the second event. The second event says that the temperature outside rises during a heat wave. Now this doesn't really impact supply, but it does impact demand. Because if the temperature goes up, people are going to demand more ice cream. This would be a change in their tastes or preferences. This would also create a rightward shift in demand or an increase in demand. And it would look something like this. So again, you can see that both curves move to the right, as you can see by their arrows. And the new demand curve is denoted D prime for the same reason, just to denote that it's the new demand curve. Now, you can very clearly see there's a new equilibrium, which of course is E prime and I can denote my new quantity and price at this E prime equilibrium as P prime and Q prime respectively. And so you might be looking at this and say, okay, cool. So from my original P star and Q star, I can see that price goes up and quantity goes up. And so there we go. I'm all done, right? Well, actually you're not done because this doesn't always happen. And you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, if supply and demand both increase, then shouldn't the resulting graph always look the same? Price goes up, quantity goes up? Well, not necessarily. You see, in the graph you're looking at in front of you, demand shifts more than supply. You can see that because the blue arrow is actually larger than the red arrow, and the difference between the two curves is greater. But what would happen if the opposite was true? What if supply was actually a bigger shift than demand? Well, you might notice that it'll look a little different. So the graph on the right is the same as the graph on the left, when it comes to the direction of the shifts, but now you can see that supply shifts more than demand. And if you look at the x-axis or the quantity axis, everything stays the same. Quantity still increases. We don't really know how much it increases to because the question doesn't really give us magnitude, but this time P star and P prime have a different relationship because now the new equilibrium price is lower than the original equilibrium price. And how can this be? Both curves are shifting to the right but the magnitude of the supply or demand shifting matters. If the demand curve shifts more than the supply curve, then price will go up. If the supply curve shifts more than the demand curve, then the price will go down. However, no matter which curve shifts more, quantity will always increase. And so maybe you're wondering on a homework assignment or on a test, what would I say when this is the case? Does price go up or does price go down? Which is it? Well, in economics, we would say that quantity increases. It increases no matter what. However, price is indeterminate. 
It means we don't know if price goes up or price goes down because we're not given the magnitude of the two events. We don't know which curve shifts more. And because of that, we don't know whether the graph on the left or the graph on the right is correct. However, along with the phrase price is indeterminate, maybe you've heard the term price is ambiguous. These two things mean the same thing. It just means that they're unknown. So no matter which graph you draw, the one on the left or the one on the right, as long as it's properly labeled, and there's no magnitude given in the question, both are correct. Maybe you're wondering what happens if the curve shift by the exact same amount? Well, in that case, price will actually not change. So P prime and P star will be the same value. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.